Okay, lovely to see you all again today. And uh, I've just got a few thoughts I'd like to share with you that to be found in the Gospel of St. Luke and Chapter 7. If you could turn to that. Gospel of St. Luke, Chapter 7. <clears throat> We've all got that. Uh, verse 11 starts, And it came to pass the day after that he went into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a, a dead man carried, carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And he said unto her, Weep not. And he came and he touched the bear, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Just so far, shall we pray? God, our Father, you are so awesome. Indeed, you are lifted up and glorious and magnificent in every possible way. And as we gaze upon your goodness and your loveliness and the glory of your person, we are amazed that you should reach down into the very heart of man and place your spirit there. We want to thank you for the Savior of, of our souls, the Lord Jesus Christ. And far and above all that too, we would thank you for the presence of your Spirit in us and our lives, the person of the Holy Spirit. And I pray today that your Spirit would hover over each one of us here, that we would be challenged by your Word, that we would be touched and strengthened by it, and that we would know that you are here. And that as we leave today, we will be able to say, God was there. And God is here with me. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Folk, uh, when you read scripture, you should always look at the details. Because the details are, in essence, what it's all about. And I, I've just read a very lovely story here. But you need to look at the details. Now, the details were like this. It says, and it came to pass that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples were with him, and much people. So we are now told where he went. He went up into a city. And in fact, the Bible doesn't tell us he went up there. But if you go to... Uh, Israel, you'll see, it's set up on a hill. And it's in the hollow of a hill. And it wasn't a beautiful city or anything, but you had to climb up and a road that was very rough and steep and had stones in it. And so it was sort of up there. And uh, the people were following Jesus, but together with him and his disciples, and there was this procession of people who were having a great excitement and a great joy because they were with Jesus Christ, and they had seen him heal so many people and touch so many people and change lives that there was an element of great excitement on the way, and they were longing to see what was going to happen now. And as they approached that city, an amazing thing happened. Their procession was going one way uphill. They were all excited and were saying what a talking to each other and saying what a joy it is to go with Jesus and to see what he does and to see what he's going to do. And then there was another procession. They were coming out of the city and they were going down to the burial grounds. That procession was a different procession altogether. They were crying and wailing as the Jews do. And they were following a poor woman 
who had lost her only source of support was her son, and he had died. And so this was the second procession. We look at the details here. It says here, Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, as he was approaching to get to the gate of the city, we are told <coughs> that it says here, uh, Behold, there was a dead man carried out. So there's an, another detail. A dead person was being carried, but by who? We know some people must have been carrying him. And then it could, goes on to say, but <clears throat> this dead man was the only son of his mother. There's another detail. And another detail, and much people of the city was with her. So we're getting a whole build up of the details. The details were plainly and simply that this process or this procession that was coming down the hill, just about the whole town had turned out because of their sadness for this woman and they were following and supporting her and wailing because she had lost her only source of support. Then we go on to look at more detail. It says, and when the Lord saw her, and bear in mind, his caravan of people were having such a joyous and wonderful time, what happens? He had compassion on her. Something deep within him said, wow, look at that. This is a tragic thing. And so he had compassion on her. And out of that whole scripture, I want to tell you something. He only spoke two lines. This is what he said to her. He went up and he said, weep not, don't cry. Then the next detail, and he came and he touched the coffin. He didn't even touch the person who needed to be healed. He just touched the coffin. That's an important detail. And it goes on to say here, and they that bear him, those are the poor bearers all carrying the coffin. They stood still when they saw Jesus coming. And all he did was touch the coffin. The Bible tells us, And he said, I say unto you, Arise. Another detail, the exact words he said. After touching the coffin. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. So there they all were, absolutely astounded at this amazing thing that had happened. He sat up and he started to talk. And what happened? And he delivered him to his mother. Now that's the story. This village up there, this procession going up to the village, all these happy, joyous people following Jesus, having such fun with him. And then there's another procession of all those people going down, down, down towards the burial ground, the place of death. Now, folk, this world is very similar to that. There are two processions. They're the ones that are going up the steep, stony path, following Jesus with great joy, longing to see what Jesus is going to do in their midst, a longing to know what's going to happen. People have got peace in their hearts because they're following someone who has all power. And then, of course, there's the other procession, all the people that are going down, down, down to death. I want to give these poor bearers some names. Who were the people that were taking this young man down to the place of death? Well, I want to tell you, a lot of us, including myself, help have poor bearers in our lives. I don't know how many people spend 
lots of time in front of the TV. That's one of the pool bearers that's taking you away from a life and a relationship with God. Ken mentioned just now, we, we, we've been privileged to share the word of God for f- actually 49 years, Kenneth, sorry, 49 years. And uh, <clears throat> I'm knocking on the door of 80. Next year I'm 80. One of my clients said to me the other day, what, do we, what am I going to do when you die? I said, hey, Gunter, I, I, I'm not dying yet. He says, but it's inevitable. <laughs> But you know, if you said to me, if you were to die tomorrow, what is the most important thing? And I'll tell you, it's got nothing to do with money. It's nothing to do with my good looks. (laughs) It's got nothing to do with what you own, who your friends are, or anything like that. It's got only to do with what your relationship with God is like. Now, I can die today if my relationship with him is close and warm, and I can hear and talk to him every day. Do you know the most incredible thing can happen? The word of God was taken by the Holy Spirit, and... It was shown to your heart, and you were supernaturally burst into the kingdom of heaven, if you're born again. But by the same token, the same Holy Spirit of God can take this word and can birth in you new life, new hope, new anything you like. If you will keep a connection with him. Jesus said, I am going now. But I'm going to leave someone better than having me here because he would have been only in one place. So he said, you can have my spirit. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That same spirit lives in every one of us here that are born again and lives in our lives and should be allowed room and space in our lives. Because he can teach you, he can help you, he can show you, he can guide you, he can do anything, and he can comfort you. And so many of us here didn't even speak to him today. We didn't sit down and say, Spirit of God, given to me of Jesus Christ, my Savior, show me, help me, birth in me new life and strength as I read your word. That's why I take this word every single day. That's why I say to God, the Holy Spirit, show me, guide me. Birth in me new hope and joy. Be my strength and my hope. Because that is his ministry to every single solid child of God. We want power, yes, but you've got to have a life with God's Holy Spirit. There's no shortcuts here. It's a relationship with God through God's Spirit and through his Son, That's what you have to empower you through a life of glory. Do you say amen to that? Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. That's better. And so we have to honestly and truthfully say, if I was to die today, do I have a meaningful relationship with God? Now, the poor bearers that take us from that relationship, TV. Do you know, I can't tell you how many people through the internet are involved with porn. But sort of secretly. Everybody else thinks they're all okay, but <clears throat> behind closed doors, they're another thing. But that's definitely a poor bearer. So will too much TV watching. So much will... Anything that robs your time from God. Now, I'm, I want to tell you, I'm not a holy Joe. I, I have a lot of faults. But the one thing that I have too is a love for Jesus Christ. Because he found me on an ash heap many, many years ago. And so, to God's glory, I've been able to tell of the wonders of Jesus Christ. Another one of our poor bearers, worry, worry. 
You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 that even the birds and the animals don't worry. But what you and I worry and worry, time and time again, why do we lose our peace? Because we worry. But you see, if you have a life with God, you will have peace. Whatever the circumstances, they don't matter. They don't matter at all. So long as you have a life with God, you will know that he'll give you the grace to go through anything, anytime, and at the same time, do the most wonderful, incredible miracles. And so, folk, we can be just that far from the most exciting experience of life. But further to that, if you're missing out the peace on the peace that Jesus gives you, and he said, I give you peace, my peace, that nobody else can give you. Why? Because the greatest gift to God, of God to mankind, is the presence of God's Holy Spirit. And I'd love to just challenge you all. Give God time. Forget about the, the internet and the telephone. The other night, I sat in a B&B, because I do a lot of traveling, and <clears throat> a couple came in, <clears throat> with a young daughter, they sat down, and uh, I was just sitting next to them, so I was listening to them, and they were talking Afrikaans, and uh, listening, and I thought, well, okay. Then <clears throat> they ordered, and then they sat. And for the next hour, they did nothing but work on their cell phones. I looked at this, I thought they've gone out for a special occasion, because I knew it was, for somebody's birthday. They never spoke a word to each other for an hour. Click, 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 click. It was actually quite irritating in the end. I thought I might as well go there and sort of fix up this party a bit. <laughs> but folk, you see, you see, these are the subtle things that draw us away from the presence of God. And I mean, God has made us in such perfection. A human person is such a beautiful thing. It's the very pinnacle, the very pinnacle of everything he's ever created, and we waste the opportunity of having a life with him. Our God is a God of miracles, believe me. Believe me. And he does so many things that are just inexplicable. A few months ago, I said to Sue, I said, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to worry because I owe so-and-so so much money and it comes due at the end of this month. And so we decided to pray. A lot of money. And uh, we prayed. Three days before the due date. Never told us all. Because if you're acting in faith, you don't tell the world what you're trusting God for. You trust God on your own. Lord. And another thing, I never pray without giving it a lot of thought. Might take me two weeks to come up with a prayer when I ask for something. Eventually, I felt I had the right prayer, and I went to God, and I said, Lord, this is the situation. Only you know this, but I'm looking to you for a miracle. And Sue is my witness. Two days before the due date, I got that exact sum of money from someone who did not know I needed it. Isn't that an amazing thing? God can do anything. And then one day, I don't know if I told this congregation, but my, I have a, such a gracious wife there. During our marriage, she said to me always, if you've had relationships with people before, one-to-one -one relationships, 
close relationships. Don't drop that person because we've got married. Keep in contact with them if you want to. Hey? Eh? Despite the fact that I'm so good looking. <laughs> no, but I just want to tell you how God works. And I'd been in contact with quite a few, and about a few months ago, there was one person I hadn't been able to contact, and I knew she just lived near Maritzburg, in Greater Maritzburg, and I hadn't seen her, no contact, nothing. And I said, Lord, help me. I want to speak to Tony about you. Will you please arrange a meeting? Two weeks later, I went to Maritzburg, and on the way back, I had to go to the hospital at the top of the hill, and I turned off and got onto the wrong turning, got back onto the highway and thought, oh, I'm going to reverse back up here, and then I saw a traffic cop. I thought, no, I'm not going to reverse back up here. So I, I went all the way back to Maritzburg, came back up the hill, kicking myself. I'd wasted a half an hour, and I had another deadline. Anyway, when I got back to there, I didn't go to the hospital because I'd lost the time, but I went and stopped somewhere because I needed to, to use the toilet there. And as I got out of my car and was locking it like this, I looked up and there she was. Getting into a car. Three seconds. That's all. Now, I'm not going to tell you of the other things, but exactly the same as that. Because we have a God that lives. We have a Jesus that cares. We have a Jesus that can raise the dead. And I want to tell you, if you want and you're on the way to place the place of death, all you need is a touch from Jesus Christ. That's all you need. You need him to touch you. You need him to touch your heart. You need him to show you how much he cares for you. Now, I want to tell you, if you've never been birthed into the kingdom, you don't know what you're missing. Jesus did not come to this world to change the world. If he had been, he'd have changed the slavery, he'd have changed everything. No, he came here to declare the fact that parallel to this kingdom, to this, to this world, there's another kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. And he's the king of that kingdom. And he invites all of us to come into that kingdom and become citizens of that great and mighty kingdom. Isn't that an exciting thing? So Sally, I've known you how long? Hey, when I first met you, you did not know that kingdom, did you? But you do now. It's a miraculous thing. Nobody can describe how it happens. But you see, the Holy Spirit can take the word of God and supernaturally birth you into that kingdom. What an exciting place. Who says amen to that? It's the most exciting place. Dear folk, I'm going to stop now, but I want to tell you something. Don't lose the opportunity. Be part of the procession that follows Jesus, no matter how stony the way, but go up with him. Become a part of who he is. Become excited about what he does. Not on the way down. Down. To the place of death. We want to live and have life. And have joy. And to God's glory, I started off as a depressive. Fifty something years ago. I have never lost my peace in 50 years. Glory to God. And so I thank you for listening. I thank you for the, the joy of being able to share these few thoughts. But please watch out for the poor bearers. Cell phones, TV, pornography, worry. Oh, take you down the road. Give God the time he deserves. He's made you a perfect, beautiful, unique creature. Be that to his glory. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen.